Hello everyone, welcome to Royal Online Tutorials, the online educational channel. Today in our video we are going to discuss the different selection methods and project management. But before we start, don't forget to subscribe my channel. Today in our session we are going to discuss some of the project screening and selection methods. Uh, but before, let's take what's a project screening model. It generates like useful information for project choices in a timely and useful fashion at an acceptable cost, which may serve as a valuable tool in helping the organization making optimal choices among numerous alternatives. So, uh, the first method in the project screening and selection uh, models uh, is a checklist. The checklist it's the simplest method in the screening and selection. So, it's a list of criteria that pertain to our choice of projects. And then we will apply them to different possible projects. So here, in deciding among several new products development opportunities, for example, the firm must weigh a variety of issues, including like, for example, the cost of development, maybe the potential return on investment, maybe uh, the risk of taking a new uh, venture, uh, maybe the stability of the development process, the uh, stakeholder interference, maybe the product durability, maybe the future market potential. The second one is the simplified scoring model. Here, each criterion is ranked according to its relevant uh, and relative uh, importance. So here, our choice of the projects will reflect on uh, our desire to maximize the impact of certain criteria on our decisions. So here, I will repeat, each criterion is ranked according to its relative importance. Another method is the payback period. Here we will determine how long it will take for the project to return on investment or to reach a break-even point. So the formula how to calculate the payback period is equal to investment over annual cash saving. Here we are going to take an example the problem about the payback period. A project requires Suppose that the project requires an initial investment of $200,000 and will generate cash saving of $75,000 each year for the next five years. So what will be the payback period? Of course, in the uh, following slides, we are going to have like the complete solution of the exercise. Here we are, we are only putting like three years just in order to calculate the payback period but we are going to continue the exercise in the next slide. Here we are giving, we are giving, they are giving us like an initial investment, which is I0, which is equal to, it's equal to $200,000. So here we will consider it as a negative one, such because it's an investment. And then they are telling us like we are going to generate cash saving of $75. So starting year one, we are earning $75,000 as revenues in each year, over five years. So we are going to put in the initial investment and in the year zero as a negative $200,000. And then we will go from year one, two, three, four, five. Uh, they are uh, earning and generating cash, save, cash saving of plus $75,000. Here to calculate the payback period, we are going to see like the first year the cumulative is doing positive number, not negative number. Okay, so as we see here, like in the uh, in the year zero, we have like two hundred thousand dollar as cumulative, plus seventy five thousand, so we will have minus one twenty five thousand dollar, minus seventy five, we will have like a minus fifty thousand dollar, and then. Uh, moving from year 2 to year 3, minus 50 plus 75, so here we will start earning like a positive $25,000. So the return on investment is between year 2 and year 3. So in order to calculate it, so we will apply the formula. And then we will uh, divide the 25000 over the 
revenue or the cash saving of the following year which is year four which is 75,000 so 25 over 75 and then we will or add the year two over it or we will subtract uh, this amount from year three so we can do it two plus 25,000 over 75,000 or three minus 25,000 over 75,000 and then we will obtain two point approximately 2.65 years so after two 0.65 years we will return on investment and we will have our payback period so here uh, we have the complete exercise uh, and the solution as we see moving from year 0 to year 5 uh, we have initial investment of $200,000 which is negative and then the other generation of cash flows uh, are positive numbers 75,000 on each year and then uh, here uh, in the cumulative cash flow we will start by year zero with uh, minus two hundred thousand dollar and then we will subtract the positive numbers which we will obtain like minus 125 minus 50,000 minus 25,000 and then uh, here between year two and year three we will return on investment and we will start making uh, profit and then it will be increasing from year three to year four to year five then we, we are going to have like 25 plus 75 is 100,000 and 100 plus 75 is equal to 175,000 dollars now we will move to the net present value which also which is also another method uh, it's uh, one of the most popular financial decision making approach and project selection uh, known as uh, the net present value method projects that change in the firm's value if a project is undertaken so here in order to calculate the net present value it's the initial investment i0 plus the sum of like the net net cash flow for period t over the 1 plus r plus p or uh, to the power t uh, here we have like uh, the t which is the duration the time uh, or the year we have like uh, the R is the required rate of return uh, the P is the inflation rate during the period T uh, adding uh, to that uh, when we have like a positive NPV or net present value this may indicate this may indicate that the firm is making money and the value is uh, rising so let's take an example and uh, through this example, we'll be more understanding uh, the concept of net present value. Uh, suppose you are going to invest $60,000 in a project that will return $15,000 per year for five years. You have a minimum return of 8% and expect inflation to hold steady at 3% over the next five years. So what will, what will happen here? As we know, you are investing in $60,000. So it's the initial investment, I0. So if you are going to put like year net flow discount factor and NPV. So in the net flow, the 60,000 is to be considered as initial investment and it's, and it's a negative number because it's an investment. So at year zero, we have a minus $60,000. And that uh, will return 15,000 per year over five years. So uh, starting year one till year five, we are earning plus $15,000 every year. So we can put 15,000 in each year starting year one in order to reach year five. Now, in order to be capable or able to calculate the net present value, we should calculate the discount factor, which is one over one plus R plus P. And we said before that we said before that uh, the R it's equal to the rate of return. Here we have it like eight percent, and the P is the inflation rate. We have it here like three percent. So then we will obtain like the formula of the discount factor. It's equal to one over one plus R plus P to the power T. So which is equal to one over 1 plus 0 0.08 plus 0 0.03 to the power t which consists of uh, 1 over 1.11 to the power t 
So suppose we are going to calculate the first one, 1 over 1.11 to the power to the power 0, everything to the power 0 is equal to 1. So 1 over 1 is equal to 1. And this, uh, the year 1, 1 over 1.11 to the power 1, we will obtain 0 0.9009. In the second year, 1 over 1.11 to the power 2, we will obtain 0 0.8116. In the year 3, 1 over 1.11 to the power 3, we will be obtaining 0 0.7312. In the year 4, 1 over 1.11 to the power 4, we will be obtaining 0 0.6587. And finally, in year 5, 1 over 1.11 to the power 5, we will be obtaining 0 0.5935. And then in order to calculate the net present value, we are going to multiply the net flow with uh, or by the discount factor. And then we will obtain minus 60,000 times 1 is 60,000, plus 15,000 times 0 0.9009, we will be obtaining 13,513.51. And then we will continue all the other years. Finally, we will add uh, the years 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Then we will subtract from the total the, the amount of $60,000. Finally, we will obtain uh, minus... 4,561.54, which is a negative number, so we don't invest in a project. The final method is internal rate of return. So here the project must meet the minimum rate of return before it's worthy of consideration. And in order to calculate it, uh, we are going to apply and work on an example on an exercise and then you will be able to understand it in a better way. So suppose here the project that cost $40,000 will generate cash flow of $14,000 for the next four years. You have a rate of return of 17%. So here does this project meet the threshold? So here we are going approximately to work the same as the net present value but here what defer is uh, we are going to obtain like a number, a non-negative number to be worth funding. For us, the number should be non-negative number and close to zero. So here, first of all, as an investment, we have like minus $40,000 and the project is generating uh, each year plus $14,000 for four years. So we will put the data and then we will calculate the discount factor. Here we don't have an inflation. So the formula of the discount factor is equal to 1 over 1 plus R to the power T. Taking into consideration that the rate of return here is equal to 17%. So it's equal to 1 over 1.17 to the power T. In year 0, we will take it 1 over 1.17 to the power 0. The second one, 1 over one point. Uh, 1 over 1.17 to the power 1, in year 2, 1 over 1.17 to the to the power 2, in year 3, 1 over 1.17 to the power 3, and in year 4, 1 over 1.17 to the power 4. After calculating the discount factor, we will be able to calculate the net present value by calculating and by multiplying the net flow with, by the discount factor. Then we will be able to have minus 40,000 times 1 is equal to minus 40,000. We will continue all the others we will try to add the first four years and then we will subtract the amount of $40,000. We will obtain finally the number of minus 1,596.6, which is a negative number. So, of course, the project is not worth funding. Thank you for watching my channel.